Welcome to the Solid Canyon University channel. This video's topic is chamfer recognition. So one of the recognition toolpaths that you can get from Solid Canyon is called chamfer recognition, uh, but the name is actually a little misleading. It doesn't actually recognize chamfers on your solid model. What it does is it recognizes edges that you would probably want to add a chamfer to. So it actually allows you to add chamfers to a part that otherwise doesn't have any kind of chamfer or beveled edge. Um, and it does that using, again, the recognition toolpath, it does that by using the actual solid model. It recognizes the faces and it recognizes what edges on those faces you might want to add a chamfer. So let's take a look at how that works. So I'm just going to go to my add milling operation and in my recognition, recognition section, we're going to go to chamfer recognition. And under geometry, we're just going to click new geometry. But as you can see, it pretty much is like your solid model selection screen. It's just waiting for me to choose my type. In this case, selection mode, I have it set to solid body. So I'm just gonna choose the target. It'll analyze the part and see all these faces on this list here, and then the highlighted edges that are represented. So anything that's pretty much perpendicular to the z-axis is gonna be a face that could be chamfered or at least the edges of those faces will be chamfered. And that's all that's highlighted in yellow. You can see it recognizes the face down there. It actually even recognizes this face here because this technically is perpendicular to the z-axis as well, and that is an edge. Now, obviously we can't get to that edge because it's, it's a hole, it's through there. So we're gonna see what this recognition toolpath is actually going to do with that. So I'll click the green check mark. I click show, shows everything in purple just like before. So essentially what this, you could think of this as a profile toolpath recognition. It's recognizing the profile paths that it could take to do some chamfering. Let's go to tool. And I already have a chamfer mill right here. So I'm just gonna click on that. So that's a 3 8 chamfer mill. Let's go to levels. As a recognition toolpath, it's already looking at the 3D model. So I don't actually have to tell it upper level, lower level. It, it already showed me what it intends to do in the geometry section. All I'm doing here is giving it some clearance information. Again, uh, every, every toolpath is going to have clearance and safety information. Uh, but for this specific toolpath, we're looking at the depth of the chamfer. So in this case, let's just put in 20 thou. Um, what you could also do with this is um, do deburring. You're not necessarily adding a chamfer, but if you just add a really small chamfer depth, then like we've seen in, in previous videos, it'll actually offset that tool based off its geometry, based off the tool definition, so that it achieves that depth of a chamfer. So if I put in, let's say, um, a thou or a tenth or something like that, just something that it just kind of kisses the part just to remove any kind of burrs, this chamfer recognition then becomes a deburring operation. In this case, let's put a 20 thou chamfer so we can actually see what this looks like. Under the technology section, you see some parameters here. Um, basically, it's all geared towards just doing chamfer, but in kind of a profile operation style. So you do still have your wall offset. You don't have your floor offset because obviously there's no floor for a chamfer, but what you have is your safety distance, your safety offset. This is what makes this different than the chamfer option in the profile operation. In profile, you choose a contour just like you did here, and you give it a chamfer depth and whatnot. But in the profile operation, you don't actually have any kind of gouge checking. Here, the safety offset is actually kind of like a gouge check. If you look in the bottom left corner, it actually, this parameter is how far to stay away from the wall based off the tool definition. So we have a 3 8 chamfer mill. I'm telling it to do all these upper chamfers. I'm also telling it to do these tabs inside here. But if I take the tool right to the tip of this, this edge, I'm actually gonna collide with the wall. So what I'll do is I'll just give it a safety distance, let's say 20 thou. So it'll actually offset the tool, the full diameter of the tool, 20 thou over, away from this face. So it actually is acting like a gouge check. Cutting diameter, like we've seen before, that just basically represents the diameter on the cone, on the tip of the tool, that I'd like to use for cutting. So this diameter of the tool is gonna ride along the, the contours we chose in the geometry section. Uh, cutting type, one way or zigzag. If for whatever reason you need to do some, some roughing or anything like that, then you have your step down, you have your, your copies of the cut, so just number of passes, and uh, extension overlap. So if you wanted to eliminate any kind of witness line on a, um, on a closed contour. Um, you can actually do some, some corner feed 
calculations or corner feed modifications here. Um, we just basically check this box and say, okay, the previous tool diameter, the roughing tool was a certain size, previous wall offset, again, extension overlap of the uh, of the portion, the rest material, like we've seen before in previous uh, videos as well, um, how much you would like to um, extend outside that, uh, that, that rest area, and then the actual feed in those corners. So if you wanted to have independent control of, of a tight corner, an internal corner, you have that, that section there. And then link, just like we've always seen before, we can add in a, a lead in, lead out of a certain type. Everything here looks good. I'm just gonna do a save and calculate, and we can take a look at that toolpath. So geometry took all the perpendicular faces. So the top face, we can see it comes in here, goes around, same with the inside edge of that same face. That curve or that edge I was talking about over here was not selected again because it would collide so it recognized that so it didn't include that if we look at the tabs let's specifically look at this one it stopped short of colliding that 3 8 tool with the wall it actually gave that 20 thou cushion that I, I defined as well if you take a look at that in solid verify chamfered all those edges. So originally, this model didn't have any chamfers on it. It had just sharp edges, um, to the point that if I were to do my, my little analysis here, it gives me a red color, indicating that I've gouged those edges. Well, that's only because the chamfer was not part of the original target model. But uh, there we are. I've chamfered all the edges that I could. These internal edges, my tool is too large, so I couldn't even touch the walls or get too close to the wall there, but basically that is how chamfer recognition works. It is literally just recognizing the possibility of a chamfer on your 3D model. Any questions on this or anything else from SolidCam, give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. You can send us your parts and your questions via the ticket system, solidcamsupport.com, or stay tuned for the rest of the videos on the YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.